Hey guys, welcome back to New Stuff TV, the Untechnical Tech Channel. I'm your host, Antoine. I know when to hold them, know when to fold them, Richardson, because today we're going to be talking about the Google Pixel Fold. Now, I know at first it's probably going to sound like I don't like this phone at all, or maybe I just hate it, but in fact, I really, really like it. Trust me on this, man. I really like the phone. There's just a handful of things that really frustrate me about the software, which makes me so frustrated because I love the hardware so much. First, let's talk about app optimization. Yes, there are Google optimized apps. I'm glad that there are Google optimized apps because that means Google is moving forward with the foldable devices. That means at some point, hopefully if you know the fold sticks around, Google's gonna be optimizing all the apps. I mean, not just Google specific apps, but I'm talking about like just general apps in the app store and there will be more development towards foldable phones. In previous times, I've been using the Galaxy Z Fold 4, and while Samsung has done a miraculous job of optimizing apps to use the open screen real estate that they give you on the Fold 4, uh, it's just not exactly like perfect because there are some glitches that will happen because most apps are not optimal or optimized for foldable devices, let alone tablets. But the fact that this phone actually exists means that there should be more development towards apps in the foldable space or even the tablet space that will be better optimized for it. Now, since this is a tech video, I guess I gotta talk about battery life. Well, it's not spectacular, but it's not trash either. It's an average. I mean, I have nothing to complain about as far as battery life. It has a decent standby time overnight, decent, okay? Like I said, nothing to write home about, but it definitely is not trash. Now here come my major complaints about the Google Fold. It's got this massive screen on the inside, right? You just open it up. First of all, the, the front screen, it is nice. It's a nice, very usable screen, but then you unfold it, you get this nice massive screen. The problem is it really does treat this one massive screen as two screens and that's not okay. For example, on your home screen, it really forces you to put any widgets on one side or the other. You cannot put a widget in the middle of the screen. It's just gonna force you to go left or right. Now, going back to app optimization, yes, they have added the dock to the bottom of the screen, which you can pull up to use apps that are dedicated uh, for the dock or you know your most recently used apps, but they're only allowing you to use two of, them, two of them at a time. So when it comes to utility, I don't know if it's quite there because you can only have one app on one side, one app on the other side. And if you actually wanna use top or bottom, you have to flip it into portrait mode. So as far as multitasking, Google has a lot of work to do with this Pixel Fold. I mean, Samsung will let you split it up into three screens if you want, like one on one panel and then two apps on the second panel or top and bottom, no matter what you know landscape or portrait you have it in. I mean, and then you got the sidebar. Now I know I am a Samsung fanboy and that's for good reasons because they give us a lot with our phone. Google is the parent of Android and it just seems like they should have given us more in the form of functionality and you know utility when it comes to multitasking on the Pixel Fold. Another complaint I have is that once you set up your layout on the cover screen, once you open the phone, it is going to be the exact same layout on the inside screen, which mm, for some people that could be okay, but it doesn't make sense because now you have a much bigger screen and now it's kind of just splitting the two panels. And on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold, you can have one screen doing one thing and then on the inside screen, it can be doing the other, which is great because it's almost like having two different phones or a phone and a tablet. In the sense of the Pixel Fold, you just get one big ass phone. And that's okay for having one massive phone to do all your stuff on. The problem is I've had better with the Galaxy Z Fold 4. So it's kind of hard to go back to not having something that was so great that I don't have anymore on a Pixel device. Now, when it comes to this interior screen and durability, mm, for the most part, I think we're okay, but it just feels a little delicate. It feels delicate because the bezels are so big. It feels like there's just this plastic piece hanging over your phone screen, which makes it feel like there could be something getting trapped up underneath there or something like that. And also since the bezels are a little bit on the large side, it's kind of jarring when you swipe from edge to edge or top to bottom when you can feel that bezel it's just kind of an off-putting feeling especially in the middle when you go from the from the middle of the phone down or up it just feels a little bit jarring with these bezels but as far as the bezels go when you're looking at the phone in landscape they pretty much just melt right away and it makes it easier to hold the phone but when you turn the phone over into landscape which is better for reading documents and stuff like that or even scrolling social media 
These bezels pop out to me right away on the left and right. On the top and bottom, not so much. And I guess that's just because we're used to looking at things in landscape with top and bottom bars and the side ones are actually relatively thin. But yeah, when you put it in a uh, portrait, you get those bezels on the side and it is jarring to me. Now let's talk about pictures. You got three camera setups on this phone. You got your front facing normal selfie camera on the cover screen, and then you got your interior selfie camera, and then you got your rear camera. Let me tell you about this. They are all better than what you would get on a Galaxy Z Fold 4. This actually puts the Galaxy Z Fold 4 to shame in the sense of foldable phone cameras. The front facing screen selfie is nice and crisp, rich. It's got the googly stuff going on in there, right? You open it up and then even in low light, the selfie camera on the internal screen, it actually performs really well, even in low light. But where you're gonna get the best quality is that rear camera. And even, I mean, even though it doesn't have the same, you know, latest generation software as the uh, Pixel 7 Pro, it really does a great job of taking great photos. This is probably hands down the best foldable camera or foldable phone camera on the market right now. Now that I've done all that complaining, let's get to my favorite aspect of the Pixel Fold. That is the phone itself, like the shape, the hardware. This thing is beautifully crafted. I really, really do like the shape of it when it's folded. The screen is super usable. But that brings me to something else, man. I know, I gotta pick up this Galaxy Fold again. When you take the Galaxy Fold, look at this. You got a tall phone and then you got a short squatty phone, okay? At first glance, it looks a little weird to use the Galaxy Fold because it's so tall and thin but that means you open it up and it's almost like a piece of paper, almost, right? It's better for reading documents and scrolling social media and stuff like that right off the bat as soon as you open the phone. When it's time to consume some content, like watching one of my YouTube videos or something like that, you do, or you should at least, turn it to landscape mode and that way you got your bars on the top and bottom and then everything is in nice wide landscape mode. And then once you're back to scrolling social media, you flip it over like it's supposed to be held and then you're good to go because this is an easier reading position. But when you take the Google Pixel Fold, it's already a good cover screen. So you really don't need to open it up unless you need that extra real estate. But once you do, you're automatically in media consumption mode because it is defaulted in uh, widescreen mode. And that's where you get those big bezels on the top and the bottom. And then of course you get bezels on the top and bottom when you're watching media content like YouTube or Hulu, like a movie or something. But then most of the things we do on a phone is social media scrolling and reading documents and stuff like that. So yeah, you will have to turn it and get it into landscape, or I'm sorry, portrait mode. And that way you can read your documents. So one phone is set up one way by default. The other phone is set up the other way. I don't know which one is the right way to do this. And now that we've actually seen how it would look to have a cover screen with this shape and form factor. I mean, this is great to use as a regular phone, especially with its thinness. This is a very thin phone. I hate the camera bump. I absolutely hate it. Let me say that for the Google engineers in the back. I absolutely hate the camera bump on all Pixel devices. <laughs> but with that being said, I really do love the thinness of this phone and the shape and form factor. I love what you've done with the hardware here. The Pixel Fold is a first generation device with hopefully a big bright future in the foldable market. I say hopefully because Google does have to re have a reputation for quitting on things. Lots of apps as far as software have been just abandoned. Oh man, I hate this stadium is gone. I've digressed. <laughs> but then of course there's hardware too, because they did give up on tablets at one point and the Nexus devices. And then, you know, now we have pixels and stuff like that. So hopefully Google decides to stick with this because that means foldables can still move forward. Because to be honest with you, Samsung has been leading the charge in the foldable market. And so bearing the brunt of that all by itself, it's a struggle, man. You can only do so much. But now that Google is heavily involved and invested, hopefully we get more improvements, especially since we have this nice, big, beautiful screen right here. I just want more functionality and utility out of it. When I open up the screen, I feel like I'm using a tablet. So I want to do tablet -y things like write. Can we get kind of like a, a pixel pen? Can we get a pixel pen? Maybe, I don't know. What else would I like? I don't know, sidebar. We got the dock there, that's nice. But multitasking is a huge thing that people do on large screen devices. I would love to see that in a software update. That's definitely a software update kind of thing. But yeah, man, more utility in this. Other, other than that, I really do love the Pixel and I love that it actually exists because like I said, it means that bigger and better things are coming from other companies. 
like Samsung. Yeah, Samsung, I'm calling you out, man. Google has Googled you, okay? So now it's time for you to step up the game. You've been able to give us whatever you want for all this time, but now there's a new player in the game and it's time to level up. Time to come up and redesign this whole almost barely usable front screen we got here. It's usable, but I'd like to see more real estate on here, okay? A little bit more thin, thinness, you know, let this thing lose some weight, you know, cause Google has Googled you. The Pixel Fold is here and that means everybody else needs to step it up. Looking at you, Samsung. I am no expert in this kind of stuff, but what I do know is you got to know when to hold them. No when to fold them. Come on, everybody. No when to walk away. Ha! No win to run.